So hi and welcome to another video and today we're going to be taking a look at the new G Pro Wireless Superlight and the glide speed of the new skate configuration. We're going to compare that to a stock G Pro Wireless to see if there's very much difference here. We're going to go through a lot of different tests, giving you a lot of statistics and information here to compare against. If you're not used to my videos, this might blow your mind a little bit. So what does this channel give you? What well, it gives you all the data, statistics and the ability to get a competitive edge over your gaming rivals here. You can use all this information to improve your ability to perform better in games. So we're going to do two different glide tests. We're going to do a flat force glide test, which is going to give you the force in grams required to move the mouse across the pad. And we're going to do an angled friction test that gives you the initial start friction required or angle at which the mouse breaks away from the mouse pad in a certain direction. So I've been doing this for a while. So I'm going to use my old cheaper wireless statistics, which is from a serial number 2024 and earlier. And I'm going to do the new cheaper wireless that I've got as well, the stock one. And then we're also going to compare an S2 common base here, which is weighted to 300 grams. And then put the skates on that as well. So you get an idea on the same base, the same weight, how these skates perform, as well as on these standard mice configurations. So if you've been watching me on YouTube, I am now streaming on Twitch only. I'll be doing all my modding and teardowns. Tonight I'll be doing the Model O wireless teardown and mod. I'll be doing it on Twitch. I'll put a link in the description for that, so don't miss that if you want to see it. So the skate thickness, where we measured these in the last teardown that I did on live stream, and the stocks came in at 0.8 millimeters thick, and the super lights came also at 0.8 millimeters thick. So there's no difference here in the thickness. I'll put a link in the description as well for that if you want to see the teardown that'll show you all the difference of the internals. We've broken them down completely here, and you can see what changes Logitech have made to that as well. Definitely worth checking out. So the stock and the super light feet here are not rounded either. They're both square, which is a bit of a shame. It would have been nice to have seen them rounded. So moving into the first glide test here, and this one is using a flat glide test. The pad here is a Logitech G640, which I've used for my base life, all my glide tests I've been doing on all my mouse reviews, as well as other glide tests for this, which I'll put a link in the description because I've also done hyperglides, tiger arcs, core pads as well. So the NSW, the new stock is 20 grams. Super light is 18 grams. The S2 stock skates is 78 grams and the S2 super light skates are 79 grams of force required. So what does this mean? This means the super light is faster here, but on the S2 base here is close, but the stock here looks to be a little bit quicker at the moment. The new stock's 26 grams, super light 22 grams, S2 stock 76 grams, S2 super light 76 grams. So the super light here again is faster, this time a little bit more of a margin, but on the S2 base here, they're both tested identical. So the RSW, new stock, 21 grams, Superlight, 23 grams, S2 stock, 71 grams, S2 Superlight, 65 grams. So this time the stocks are faster, but on the S2 base, these Superlights are faster by some margin here. Just starting to see some differences here. And we'll go into that a little bit later on. We'll just get the figures out for now. So the RFW, new stock, 25 grams, Superlight, 24 grams, S2 stock, 69 grams, S2 super light 78 grams. So interestingly here, the super light is fastest. And then on the S2 base, the stock here is quite a bit faster. It's well ahead here by something like nine grams. So what does all this mean? Well, we take the RSW and the NFW, which gives us the average here, which is how you would normally use a mouse pad in the right rotation. And the old stocks came in with an average of 27 grams. The new stock, 24 grams. Super light, 23 grams. S2 stock, 74 grams an S2 Superlight 71 grams of force here. So this means the Superlight here does look to be slightly ahead in both these tests here, making it look like it's a little bit of a quicker glide. So moving on to the angle test here, which tests the friction at which it breaks away at, what degree the mouse breaks away at. So what I don't have here for the angled one is the older G Pro Wireless. I've only really been doing this test recently. So we're just gonna use the standard stock here, which is above serial number 2024 here. So the angled NSW for the stock is 12 degrees, the Superlight, nine degrees, S2 stock, 10 degrees, S2 super light, 11 degrees. So in this first angle test, you'll see the stock is looking like it breaks away at a higher friction to the super light here, making it a little bit trickier to start initially off the pad here. So the NFW stock is 10 degrees, super light is 10 degrees, S2 stock is 11 degrees, S2 super light is 11 degrees. Again, these are absolutely identical here. There's no difference here in the breakaway force in either the normal mice or the actual stock SD base. RSW, the stock was seven degrees, super light seven degrees, S2 stock seven degrees, S2 super light six degrees. 
So again, here they're very, very similar. The only difference here is the S2 Superlight is one degree less friction, therefore easier to initially start by the looks of it. So the RFW, the stock was six. Superlight was seven degrees. The S2 stock was six degrees and S2 Superlight was six degrees. This makes them very, very similar. The only difference is the stock is a bit easier to initially start on the mouse here, but overall on the S2 base here, they're both identical. So what does all this mean? Checking out the averages here. Well, we get the stock is an average of nine degrees. The super light is an average of nine degrees. The S2 stock is an average of nine degrees. And the S2 super light, which is the only difference here, is 8.5 degrees, which pretty much is the same here. So no difference here on the friction to move off the pad. So a few things to consider here before we wrap this up. Number one is there's definitely going to be some margin of error here. So given how close these are, unless there's a massive difference, I think it's fair to say these can be very, very similar in glide speed here. One of the things I've been talking about before I do my review, which I will be doing for this super light, is that I wasn't too fond of the front skate. You'll see that on Twitter and stuff. I've been talking about it. I am finding that it's catching on the front and that's still the case here. Perhaps if they'd rounded the front skate, that wouldn't be much of an issue, but I'm certainly feeling that because it's a really, really flat edge. Over time, it is wearing down, so it's getting a little bit smoother but I was feeling that initially at the start. I do have some core pads coming, which I'm going to test as well for the super light. We'll be doing that very shortly. If you're interested in other glide tests, like I said, I've already done glide tests for the G Pro Wireless for the Hyperglides, core pads, Tigers. Put a link in the description. Definitely worth checking that video out if you haven't already. I'm a fan of the new configuration for the rear skate. I do like how it's one piece now. It's not split into three. I'm still not a fan of the front skate, as we've said. But it was interesting to see here the difference in glide speed which really for me they are very very similar. So let me know in the comments what you think. Thanks for watching this video and I'll see you again soon. Catch you later. Bye bye.